हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट दीडियो फर्स्ट कैटेगरी इज द यूज ऑफ जेम्स जेम्स स्टैंड फॉर द जेनेटिक इंजीनियर माइक्रोब सो फर्स्ट इज द यूज ऑफ जेम्स इन मेडिसिन सो इन केस ऑफ मेडिसिन दे मे बी यूज फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ रिकम्बिनेट थ्योरोपैटिक प्रोटीन्स लाइक हेयर इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ रिकम्बिनेट इंसुलिन एंड रिकम्बिनेट ह्यूमन ग्रोथ हार्मोन recombinant human insulin in 1978 by the herbert boyer the first protein it is the first recombinant thrombotic protein that was approved by the fda in 1982 and it is you can say produced by genetically engineered e coli bacteria that contain or in which the human insulin has been transferred like insulin the another protein that is human growth hormone was also approved by fda in 1985 and it was produced by modifying the e coli strain that contain the native human growth hormone genes so now here discuss that how insulin or you can say human insulin was produced in e coli so these are the steps that was used for the production of human insulin first obtaining the human insulin gene means first of all the gene for the human insulin was isolated and you can say it was isolated by making the cdna or complementary dna copy of messenger rna for human insulin in the next step this human insulin gene it was joined with the plasmid vector and after joining with that plasmid vector now this recombinant dna plasmid which now contain the gene for human insulin it is transferred or introduced into the bacteria that is e coli so when it is transferred into the e coli then after transfer that transformed e coli bacteria means that bacteria which contain that recombinant dna molecule they are selected and allow for the growth and after the growth they produce insulin that can be extracted and used in the various therapeutic purposes now let's discuss the production of growth hormone as one more example so here in case of growth hormone the gene for the human growth hormone was isolated from the pituitary gland and insertion of whole growth hormone into the plasmid vector and cloning into e coli it result in the biologically inactive hormone means if the complete gene is introduced into e coli then the resultant protein that is growth hormone uh, would be biologically inactive because the bacteria can translate the region of genes that are not translated in human thereby produce pre hormone containing an extra 26 amino acids which might be different difficult to remove what it means that in case of humans the first 26 amino acid that was not translated but when the complete gene transferred to the e coli that bacteria able to translate these extra 26 amino acid also and once they translated they are difficult to remove so that's why the segment of gene which code for the these first amino acids it is you can say it is constructed artificially from the nucleotide blocks so the steps in of the growth hormone production it involve first chemical synthesis of gene for the first 24 amino acid as i told the bacteria it can also translate the first 24 amino acids so we just remove the first 24 amino acid from the complete growth hormone gene and these 24 amino acids they are artificially synthesized from the nucleotides in the next step is the isolation of messenger rna then the messenger rna for the growth hormone is isolated from the human pituitary gland tissue further in next step the reverse transcription of this messenger rna has been done by the enzyme reverse transcriptase and which convert this this you can say messenger rna into the dna which is known as the c dna or complementary dna and this full gene is now cut with restriction enzyme to remove first 24 nucleotide or you can say bases because these 24 bases has been artificially synthesized by us in the next step the synthetic gene means the gene for the first 24 base pair and now this c dna they are joined with each other with the help of enzyme which is known as the t4 dna ligase once these are ligated with each other 
so the they are transfer to the suitable vector like the expression vector ph g h 407 derived which is derived from the plasmid pbr322 is used and now this recombinant dna it is finally transferred to e coli where it express and form this human growth hormone and from this bacteria now the human growth hormone it can be isolated and you can say it can be purified so ultimately this bacteria can be used for the mass production of human growth hormone so these were the two example that how we can use genetically engineered microbes for the production of therapeutic protein the other proteins which can be made by these gems like clotting factor which can be used to treat hemophilia hemophilia is a disease in which the clotting factor are absent or you can say inactive so that the blood it does not clot so in that case we can make clotting factor in the microbes and transfer these clotting factor to the patients which are suffering from the hemophilia disease similarly we can also make interferons to treat some cancer in these gems another example that is erythropoietin can also be formed which can be used for the treatment of anemic patient and tissue plasminogeno activator that is tpa tissue plasminogen activator which dissolve the blood clot so it can also be produced in these genetically engineered microbes and can be used to treat the patient in which or you can say on in those persons whose blood has been you can say interrupted with the blood clot so, so to dissolve these blood tpa can also be used next application that is production of recombinant vaccine so as we can make the recombinant protein we can also make the recombinant vaccines by using these gems like for example recombinant hepatitis b vaccine here the saccharomyces cerevisiae which is also known as the common bakers yeast it produced this hepatitis b virus vaccine which is based on the hepatitis b surface antigen means the hepatitis b surface antigen has been produced in this in this saccharomyces cerevisiae which can be used as a vaccine under the trade name angirix b similarly the recombinant rabies vaccine can also be developed against this rabies disease so we can also use these gems for the production of recombinant vaccines next is the use of these genetically engineered microbes in agriculture field so in agriculture generally we can transfer genes which which prevent us our crop from the pest or insects and here like taking the example that toxin genes from the bacillus thuringiensis israelensis is inserted into the syncocystis and synco cocos species which are the photosynthetic cyanobacteria so this insecticidal protein means that gene make that insecticidal protein it is highly toxic when ingested by the mosquito larva so they can be used to control the mosquitoes similarly the nitrogen fixing genes like nif l and nif a they can be inserted into the rhizobium meliloti which is a strain of bacteria and it increase the amount of nitrogen fixed by these bacteria means these gems which contain the genes for nitrogen fixing they can increase the amount of nitrogen fixed by these bacteria in the soil another example that we can make the ice minus bacteria what are these ice minus bacteria so pseudomonas strain of bacteria they generally cause the frost damage means they can cause a frost damage by changing the water into the ice crystals means the water surrounding them they can change that water to ice crystal and ultimately cause the frost damage to the crops so we can develop ice minus bacteria in which the ice forming genes of this bacteria has been removed and when this ice minus bacteria they are applied to crops so they will compete with the ice plus bacteria means the bacteria which have the these genes so this ice minus bacteria will compete with ice plus bacteria and confer the some frost resistance and similarly the in case of next example that the application of this bacillus thuringiensis that is bt and some other bacteria they also help to protect the crop from insect infestation and some other plant diseases so with advanced genetic engineering these bacteria may be manipulated for increased efficiency and expanded host range some other use of gems are also there like in case of bioremediation 
बायोरेमिडिएशन इज अ प्रोसेस वेयर द बैक्टीरिया आर यूज टू कन्वर्ट द पोल्यूटेड इनटू लो टॉक्सिक और यू कैन से लेस टॉक्सिक फॉर्म सो जेनेटिकल इंजीनियरिंग इट कैन इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ एंजाइम दैट आर यूज टू डिग्रेड टॉक्सिन मींस द एंजाइम व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड और व्हिच इज इन्वॉल्व इन डिग्रेडिंग द टॉक्सिन कंपाउंड सो अमाउंट और लेवल ऑफ दैट एंजाइम कैन बी इंक्रीज्ड बाय द जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग और यू कैन से बाय ट्रांसफरिंग द जीन्स ऑफ दैट एंजाइम इन द होस्ट और माइक्रोब्स लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल genetically engineered bacteria which are capable of cleaning oil spills like oil it generally contain four main groups of hydrocarbons like xylene naphthalene octane and camphor so the oil eating superbug it was developed by ananda mohan chakravarti in, in 1975 and in 1980 he received a patent on the genetically modified pseudomonas potida bacterium that would eat up the oil spills so that pseudomonas potida contain four element that is oct plasmid which degrade the octane hexane and decane xyl plasmid which degrade the xylene and toluene cam plasmid which will de which degrade the camphor and nh plasmid which degrade the naphthalene so this pseudomonas protida ultimately degrade the oil spill so this is also the one of the application of this genetically engineered microbes in food industries means the bacteria have been used in the food industry for very long time because they produce certain enzymes amino acids flavoring agents so that are very helpful in the food industry so with the advances in genetic engineering the new genetic changes can be done in these microbes so that these microbes are you can say they produce very much level of these enzymes amino acid or flavoring agents so generally for the food products these genetically modified bacteria they include alpha amylase which convert starch to simple sugars chymosin which clot milk protein for cheese making and pectin esterase which improve the fruit juice clarity so these are the some examples of the bacteria which are used in the food industry similarly the aspergillus niger and the cleuromyces lactis e coli they are also engineered to produce recombinant myosin so these genetically engineered microbe they can also be used in the food industry for increasing the nutritional value or you can say the flavoring of the food some other uses of these genetically engineered microbes are like the gm bacteria means genetically modified bacteria they have been developed to leach the copper from their ore so which is known as the bio leaching similarly the these gm bacteria they may be developed to clean up the mercury pollution and the gm bacteria can be developed to detect the arsenic in the drinking water so these are the some also the applications of these genetically modified or you can say genetically engineered microbes so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much